Hi everybody! Uh, thanks for coming and checking out my video on how to choose a really nice vintage teacup for your collection. Uh, my name is Kimberly and I own Happy Gals Vintage, which is an online store. Uh, we sell all kinds of vintage items, mostly smaller items, um, collectibles in porcelain and glass and ceramic and sometimes metal, other, other uh, materials, but we really concentrate mostly on porcelain. Um, and you can see some of the items that we have available for sale um, are behind me right now in my studio here in Vermont. Um, and we've been selling stuff since 2014. Um, I've, I've been selling online since 2011 um, because I also have another shop. It's called Elements 5. And there I sell my own original artwork and that of my daughter Amber, um, as well as other handmade items and handmade jewelry um, with crystals. Uh, so we have a lot of really beautiful items for collecting and for gift giving. Um, and the links will be um, below this video in the description. So if you want to check out our shops, we would really appreciate it. And um, uh, right now also, uh, we're having a 20% off sale in both of our shops. And it's just till the end of May uh, 2018. Um, so now's a great time if you're interested in um, just seeing what we do and what we have available and um, getting it at a great price. Um, okay, so to talk about teacups. Now I personally love teacups <laughs> um, because they're just so beautiful and um, each one of them has its own personality um, and especially when you get into vin vintage and antique teacups. Um, they are an art all in themselves, definitely. Um, and But when you first start collecting, or when you first start becoming interested in teacups, it can be a little daunting, um, because there's just so much out there. Um, and so one of the first things you want to you think about when you're collecting teacups is the different makers of teacups, the different porcelain companies who produce the teacups. Um, and there are certain makers that are more sought after and more collectible. And that's because of the tradition they have of making just really high quality porcelain items. Um, and also sometimes it has to do with the stylization of the teacups, um, the artists that work for the companies, their designs. Um, so. Let me see. Um, certain makers that are that are particularly um, collectible. One that I think of right off the bat is Royal Albert, um, and Royal Albert is an English company, um, and their cups are just really beautiful, and they have they have collections of teacups. Like one that comes to mind is a Flower of the Month collection where they had, they came out with a different uh, birthday teacup each month and the and the teacup would have the, the name of the month inside the teacup. Um, and I thought I had a one, a September one, but it's not right here in this part of my inventory right now. Um, <clears throat> But anyway, they do have series, Royal Albert does. They love to do flowers. Um, this is a Royal Albert. The way you know the maker is almost all well-known well makers will have their, their name right on the bottom of the teacup. Uh, often they will title the teacup or they will number the teacup. They will often say uh, where the teacup was made. <clears throat> and. Um, Sometimes they'll even be hand numbered if they were hand painted, which is also makes a teacup more collectible if it was hand painted, and then hand numbered or even hand signed by the artist on the bottom. Um, that is really adds to the collectability of a teacup. Um, so this is a Royal Albert. Um, another maker that is highly collectible that I really like a lot is Ainsley. Um, 
Now, Ainsley, again, you know, you're going to find the name of the maker on the bottom of the cup. Um, and Ainsley is another English company. This is a really pretty pink Ainsley teacup that we have available in our shop right now. The other one, the Mayflower one from Royal Albert that I just showed you, that's also available in our shop. Um, Ainsley often, their teacups will have a signature a handle design that's different than this one, and this isn't an example of that, but um, often they'll have more of an angular top to the handle that kind of comes out at an angle and then drops down and curves under. This one isn't that way, so it's a little different than many Ainsley's that you will find. Um, this one has been hand numbered on the bottom. That means that there was only a series of a certain amount of these cups made, um, or sets made of teacup and, and saucer. And so it just lets you know that it is a limited edition. Um, the other thing, um, the other thing that that you may want to do is concentrate on teacups that are only made in certain parts of the world. So we were just looking at English teacups, um, and there are many English teacups that are that were made and are still being made, and a, a, a collection of English teacups would be a wonderful collection. Um, you could also concentrate on teacups from someplace like Bavaria. Um, I love Bavarian teacups, and they tend to be um, rare, more hard to find, at least in the United States where I am. Um, this is actually a demitasse. It's not a teacup. Um, it's made for like strong coffees, um, but it gives you an example of sort of the Bavarian look, um, the craftsmanship. It has a very uh, sort of uh, more antique look, older look, uh, ornate look. There's lots of gold, lots of gilding going on, um, more ornate designs, um, and I, I just think they're really, um, beautiful. Um, this is a Johann Leftman, um, and again, this one's numbered. Um, this is a set, actually I have two of these, Bavarian Dimitas, uh, a blue and a green that match. Um, they're the same design, they're just the two different colors. These are also for sale in our shop right now, and they're just, they're just beautiful. I just love this set. <laughs> this set of um, two little little teacups. Um, so you know, if you if you wanted to get into only collecting teacups from a certain area, Bavarian teacups are beautiful. Um, your your collection will grow more slowly than pro possibly if you're only collecting English teacups because, like I said, they're a little more rare to find. Um, and then the other possibility is to collect teacups from Japan. Um, and one very collectible um, option is to collect teacups from occupied Japan, which was when the United States occupied Japan um, after World War II. So those types of teacups, they will say um, right on the bottom that they were produced in occupied Japan. And they, um, that means they were produced late 40s um, into the early 50s. Um, and there are many different kinds. And some occupied Japan are gorgeous, really nice quality, like this particular one that I'm holding right here. Others are not as high quality. So just because it says occupied Japan doesn't necessarily mean that it's a highly collectible teacup. Um, but it definitely adds to the value because of the age. Um, that you should still look for a teacup that really has nice design and um, nice colors and the workmanship is just very high quality. I love this one because of the teal colors um, and the orange flower. I mean, it's just so beautiful. There's the black on the outside. Um, yeah, I really like this one. This one I've just recently added to the inventory. Um, but Japanese teacups in general, even if you don't collect Occupied Japan, can be a lot of fun. Um, this is a set. Oops. Um, this is a set that is called Dragonware.